Happy New Year, fellow romantics. It's 2022, and I'm not sure um, how to start because um, the start of a new year doesn't feel quite the same as it used to. You know, it used to be this promising thing, and now we're still dealing with COVID and we're still just waiting to see if we can go back to some sort of normalcy. I do want to wish you all the joy and love you can handle, and of course, good health. All right, let's get started with this first episode of 2022. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is Worth the Risk, Part 27, Silence. Raven picked up her pace as soon as she turned the corner. Natalie's house was only a minute or two away, and she was impatient to get there. She felt like she had lost the whole day, and she didn't want to lose another second. Bart had kept her busier than expected today, but the truth was that, unexpectedly, Raven had had a good time. She still believed in the Lifty project and had been excited to get the latest updates about its developments. For a few moments, she had even debated investing in Bart's company, after all. She could see how his robot could make life easier for so many. People like her mother would be spared injuries from years of lifting patients. But for the project to have impact, its designs needed to be open source. That way, people and teams around the world had access and could build their own version of the robot without costly research and development. Now that Bart had secretly decided to turn Lifty into a fully commercialized product by keeping the designs proprietary, the designs would not reach the people who needed them most. Only wealthy companies and people would be able to afford the robot. Raven knew that's how the world worked. Her full-time job was in sales, after all. Still, she had believed things could be different. Bart had too when she met him. His original plan had been to only commercialize the maintenance service. Maybe it was all too good to be true, Raven sighed. She would learn a valuable lesson from this experience once she had gotten a chance to process everything. For now, though, she just wanted to focus on spending time with Natalie. Excited, she opened the gate of Natalie's small front garden. She was surprised to find the living room unlit. Then again, it was still light outside. Maybe Natalie was in the kitchen. She walked to the front door and rang the doorbell. After a minute or so, she pressed the button again. But Natalie still didn't answer the door. Raven took a step back and looked up at the bedroom window. The curtains were open. She scratched her cheek and then pulled her phone out of her pocket. Hey, I'm at your door. She texted to Natalie. She looked around the garden while she waited for a reply. She smiled at the gnome in the corner. It was covered in muck, but she could still see its grin. Raven wondered if Natalie had bought it herself or had gotten it as a gift. Her phone chimed in her hand. She quickly checked the screen and saw that Natalie had replied. The message read, You are? What happened? Raven frowned. She didn't understand the question. Raven had let Natalie know she'd come over as soon as she could. It had only taken her a few minutes to pack up her stuff at the hotel. Surely Natalie couldn't think she had taken too long. Are you home? Raven typed, confused. No, but I'll be home soon, Natalie sent back immediately. Raven turned around. She looked at the water, clenching her jaw. If she had known that Natalie would make a stop on her way home, she wouldn't have hurried so much. She walked back onto the street and crossed it. The metal railing by the water felt warmer than she had expected. She closed her hands around it and pursed her lips as she thought. What am I doing here? I don't belong here, flashed through her mind. Raven closed her eyes, trying to fight off this uncomfortable feeling she knew all too well. She didn't want to feel it around Natalie. Raven wanted things to be different with her. She wanted to feel like she belonged. But what for? 
she wondered. She tightened her grip on the railing. Could she picture herself living in Europe? Or would Natalie be willing to move to the States? Raven knew it was early to think about these things. But what was the point of this relationship if they couldn't have a life together? I'm too old to be fooling around, she thought and sighed. Raven looked at her phone. She hadn't heard Natalie's new message come in. It said, I'll be there in two minutes. For a second, Raven was tempted to leave. She could go back to the hotel and hide in her room. She'd be safe and alone there. It would be Sunday soon enough. She would fly back home and forget about everything that happened on this trip. Yeah, right, she thought. She knew she'd be crying by the time she reached the hotel. Raven couldn't run away from her feelings for Natalie, even if she wanted to. No, she would face reality, no matter the outcome. She turned around and walked back into the small garden. Natalie arrived on her bike soon after Raven had taken a seat on the doorstep. Hey, Natalie said, pushing through the gate with her bike. Her cheeks were flushed. I didn't expect to see you so soon. Really? Raven asked as she got up. But I told you I'd come as soon as I could. Natalie propped the bike against the fence and pulled a key out of her front pocket. I thought you were out for dinner with Bart, she admitted shyly. Raven frowned. Why would I do that? I, I don't know, Natalie stammered. She opened the front door. I guess I just assumed. Raven followed Natalie inside. She was flabbergasted that Natalie could think she would go out with Bart. It was so hard to understand that she was silent for several minutes. Natalie, too, seemed to be out of words for a while. She had put away her bike against the living room wall, closed the door, and gone into the kitchen. Raven didn't follow her, but sat down on the couch instead. The silence was getting very uncomfortable. Raven struggled to understand what had changed between them. She knew she felt annoyed, but it was hard to pinpoint why exactly. She needed some time to sort through the emotions. Do you want some iced tea? Natalie asked. Sure, Raven said, rubbing her temples. The lack of sleep was catching up with her. A headache was forming in the back of her head. When she rubbed the top of her head, the tension there felt intense. She got up with a groan. Hey, do you happen to have some paracetamol? She asked as she walked into the kitchen. Natalie looked up from her phone. Oh, of course, she said as she typed for a bit longer before putting the device away. This behavior pushed a button for Raven. Why was Natalie hiding in the kitchen and texting God knows who when they could be spending time together? Especially after the day they'd had. She walked back to the couch, plopping down. She regretted the abrupt movement immediately. The headache spread out and made her squint in pain. Hey, are you okay? Natalie asked, startling Raven. She handed Raven a glass of water and a white pill. Raven assumed this was the paracetamol and swallowed it without questions. She put down the glass on the small coffee table and rested her face in her hands. After a few minutes, Natalie asked, do you want to lie down upstairs? Raven considered her options. The headache wasn't letting up so far, and there was no way she could go back to the hotel in this state. On the other hand, once she lied down, she'd probably stay the night. Did she still want that? Yeah, probably a good idea. She finally gave in. Okay, Natalie said and got up. She held out her hand. Let me get you comfortable. Her voice was sweet and patient. Raven felt some of her annoyance evaporate immediately. Why was she so keen to immediately think the worst of Natalie? Thanks, Raven smiled tiredly. She got up with a heavy sigh. Her stomach felt upset too now. She feared a migraine was already well on its way. There was only one way to stop it lie down and close her eyes. Natalie held her arm as they made their way up the stairs. Raven undressed in the bathroom, but avoided looking in the mirror. 
When she walked into the bedroom, Natalie had closed the curtains and pulled back the covers. Do you want a back rub? Would that help? Natalie whispered after Raven had taken a seat on the bed. Raven hesitated. She knew a massage could help a great deal, but she was also reluctant to allow that kind of intimacy right now. Something inside her had shifted tonight, as if some kind of happy bubble had burst. She lied down, flinching when she placed her head on the pillow. The muscles of her neck and shoulders were super tense. She frowned and turned on her side. That felt even worse. She hoped the painkiller would start working soon. Come on, Natalie said and sat down on the bed. Take off your shirt and let me help you. Raven sighed and obeyed, struggling to take the shirt off. The tension in her neck and jaw even made her teeth hurt. She lied down on her stomach and put her arms above her head. Natalie placed a knee on both sides of her middle and sat down gently on Raven's behind. Raven felt her body respond, despite the migraine. Heat spread in the pit of her stomach and her breathing picked up. She bit back a groan when Natalie's hands started rubbing her lower back expertly. Raven shut her eyes and took in a deep, shaky breath while Natalie worked her way up. The way Natalie used her hands was simply divine. Raven moaned as Natalie patiently took care of every sore spot in her back. It didn't take long before Raven started to drift off. Shit, I don't want to give this up, she thought, half awake, half asleep. Ever. This was part 27 of Worth the Risk. A huge thank you to everyone who supported me in 2021 and everyone sticking around for 2022. I hope we can keep this podcast going together with a new story starting in the summer. Um, I have to get started on that, kind of start deciding what it will be and stuff. Um, but of course, I want to keep working on Worth the Risk first and finish this story. And I can do that with your help. So thank you so much to everyone who supports me on the website and on Patreon. It means the world to me. If you too want to help me keep going in 2022, you can at lesbianromantic.com forward slash support. All right, that's all for this first episode of 2022. I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> in the next episode but you know i'm just i'm kind of still getting used to it it's like oh my god it's 2022 oh wow just shocking anyway that's all for this episode i will see you soon <laughs> that will still be in 2022 yep snuck it in one more time and um thank you so much for listening today thank you for spending time with me and I will see you soon. Bye.